Hey, Audis. We wanted to wish you all a lovely week, and we hope you are enjoying all of the free content we offer on this podcast. Did you realize we have over 150 episodes that all stream for free? Yes, we do. The money we do make just covers our business license fees and our website, so we're like really not at the point where we're able to leave our day jobs. <laughs> However, our dream is to do this full time. So if you could share ODFM with everyone and anyone, we'd so much appreciate it. And if you'd like to download our flyers and distribute some for us, I've included a link on our website, odfmpodcast.com, where you can download them and print them out. We appreciate your support and feedback, and thanks for being such a fun, loyal crew. With that said, we want to introduce you to one of our partner podcasts through the Darkcast Network. Through this episode of theirs, Paranormal Peeps is the podcast. They visited a site in Wyoming, you know, me and my Wyoming stuff. This is Kelly, by the way. Me old home state. So they <laughs> they visit Wyoming and we wanted to share their episode about it for you all to enjoy this week. It's about a haunted prison. We'll be back next week with our usual dark brand of humor and needless antics. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Paranormal Peeps podcast. We are super glad to have you guys back for another exciting and breathtaking episode. Wow. <laughs> Don't oversell it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it takes your breath away in a good way. In a different sense, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so before we get started on our, our great topic, who do we got around our table? I don't know who's here. <laughs> well, I'm Jamie. pretty sure you're Jamie. I'm Jamie. I think. Am I? Yeah. Okay. I'm Last Jamie. time I checked, you were. Yeah, I'm Jamie. I'm Elisa. And I'm Josh. We uh, we just got back from probably I would say our, our, one of our best out of state road trips. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah. And uh, where did we go? Well, we went to Rawlings, Wyoming. And if you haven't heard of it, don't worry, we didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty small town. It is. It is. And but it was it's interesting cuz that town has a lot of history associated to it and it's just neat to see how you know the state and has developed in, in that place. The primary forms of employment there is the prison cuz the state prison is there and working for the state in like the uh the the other government roles and they, that's how or I'm sorry not that mining the oil and gas industry yeah so you either work for the prison or you work in the oil and gas fields fun absolutely <laughs> so yeah the, the neat thing about our trip was it was a nice multi-day trip it was and so our first day um, besides driving to the great state of Wyoming uh, and getting into the town and checking into our highly five <laughs> two-star hotel. <laughs> I'd say one star, but yeah, the beds were comfy. Yes, yes, they were. Um, I don't think it's been updated since it was <laughs> built in the 1970s, honestly. No. Yeah, no, except for the beds. They still have the same bedspreads, though. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> Brown and tan. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Gross. But yeah, so we got to explore the city a little bit. You know, that's one of the things that we like to do anytime we go somewhere is to see the, the local sites. And so where do we end up? Well, we ended up a few places, though. We did. So which one do you want? <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> well, we, we went and saw, like, the older buildings and the kind of what would be the downtown district, right? Yeah. Considered, I guess. We went and took pictures of the Masonic Lodge down there. Temple. Was it a temple? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Masonic was, Temple. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I would have loved to have gone inside that building. Mm-hmm. Except they had a, a live event going on of some sort. Yeah. And I'm sure, like, if I would have opened the door and walked in, they all would have turned around and was like, 
who are you and why are you in our place? <laughs> well, what was cool is there was a ton of deer walking around everywhere. Oh, on the sidewalks, across the road. And they were not afraid of you at all. Oh, no. Nope. Come up and just eat right next to you. Oh, man, it was so cool. Yeah, it I, was wanted awesome. to, I wanted to try to pet one, but I was worried that uh, I'd end up like in a YouTube video getting pummeled <laughs> by a deer. <laughs> Them stomping your face into the ground. <laughs> yeah. But we ended up going to stopping at the cemetery. Which all normal people do. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we looked for all the old haunted buildings and, and cemeteries. <laughs> and we found two, though. Yes. We found one that was for the prison itself. Mm-hmm. And then across the street is one for the town. And that one was huge. I was surprised. Yeah. With how big that was. That one was everywhere. <laughs> I, I think it's probably the only cemetery the entire town has had since its existence. I'm going to guess probably. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. And we we explored all of like a tenth of it. We didn't get very far in there. No, we didn't. But what was cool is they had a section for um, people who have been in all these different wars. Mm-hmm. And that was just really cool because they would actually list which wars that they were a part of. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them were like three, three different wars that oh, they had yeah. been in. Yeah. There was one guy, he he fought in the Spanish-American War, World War One, and World War Two, And looking at his life, so he spent mainly his entire life fighting in the wars. That's crazy. Yeah. You don't have time for anything else. No. no. And it's amazing. Yeah. You know, the crazy part is I tried to find him. I tried to look him up. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find him. Yeah, but in all fairness, how much time did you spend? More than I should have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. But sometimes it takes quite a bit of digging and knowing where to look. and It does. I think the only way, because he was a member of the Navy, mm-hmm. and the only thing I didn't do is put in a uh, Freedom of Information Act request to, find, to get him his naval records. Right, because that would be cool. It would be super cool. It would just be a lot of work. Yeah, but because, like, that place was so cool, we thought, well, hey, let's just try to do an EVP session real quick and see what we get. Yeah, and we did. I wasn't going to bring the digital recorder in, and Jamie's like, go back and go get it. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm actually really glad she did. Yeah, Yeah, so we found this area where it was, like, a family plot, and there was kind of, like, a little... I don't want to say barricade, but it was like a little cement square around this section of the family. And we just sat on it and decided to have a little chat. Yep. And we got some pretty cool evidence out of that. Just winging it. We did. And the neat part about it, though, is it sounds like the guy that we talked to wasn't even actually part of that family. He Mm kind of just followed us around the cemetery. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a personal experience. Um, I was sitting and I was trying to do an EVP session at a family grave there. And I kind of was kneeling down in front of the, the grave and I could I could see over my right shoulder and I kind of got a glimpse of someone standing in the road, like a man, like a shadow person standing in the road. And then I blinked and the person was gone. Mm-hmm. Well, and then when we were leaving, I saw something very similar, but it like like it was watching us. And then it ducked behind a headstone. Because a lot of the headstones there were actually fairly big. Yeah. And um, you could see it just go, like, like duck right underneath, or right behind it. So, but it was really fast. It's one of those things where it's hard because you're like, oh, did I really see that? Right. Did I not see that? But I swear I saw it, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Because it just happened so fast. But, and there's no, like... um, features that you see it's just a dark mass so anyways it's one of those things where i question like did i see it but i swear i saw it i don't know but yeah pretty cool it was pretty cool yeah and so i i honestly think the individual that we were talking to was that was that guy now it may Which not we may have not have been but mm-hmm. gonna... he seems so friendly though i don't see him ducking behind anything so tell me about your experience that we had when we were doing the evp session Oh, you mean the cold spot? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I started feeling the cold spot kind of around me and Elisa. It was kind of in front. Yeah. So if you can picture it, so we're all sitting 
next to each other. Mm -hmm. It goes Josh, Jamie, and then me. So Jamie's in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. But we felt a cold spot in front of us. Uh, the, the trees weren't moving or anything, so there was, like, no wind. There, there was a light breeze There blowing. was a light breeze, but this was distinctly different. And it's warm. Mm -hmm. It was warm out. It was very, yeah. it was very nice out. But I was actually recording on my phone at the time, taking a video, and Elisa was kind of explaining to the spirit, because at first she's like, oh, there's a man approaching us from over here on the right. Mm -hmm. He's kind of coming across over here. Um, but yeah, that was him. I believe that was him we were feeling, but she was explaining like what my phone was and what I was doing. And she's like, you know, if you go behind Jamie, you can see, you know, mm -hmm. kind of the screen and stuff. And, <clears throat> and so I had said, yeah, you know, you can come back behind me over my shoulder and look if you like. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I think a minute or two maybe went by and then I started feeling cold. Yeah. On, on my back. Yeah, it wasn't long. And mm -hmm. one of the first things we do anytime we start an EVP session, right, is we like to introduce ourselves. Yeah. Because we like to tell someone who we're talking to. And so Elisa said, hey, you know, I'm Elisa. This is Jamie. This is Josh. Yep. And then we get this EVP. And I'm going to play for you now. Josh. You can hear Elisa just get done talking, and then you hear, yeah, I know. Yeah, male voice. So cool. It's yeah, so, so cool. cool. <laughs> and then right at the end, you'll hear, turn around, now. Yeah. And the significant part about that is, as Jamie had mentioned, that she had felt that cold spot on her, on her shoulder. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, two seconds. After. Before the was cold spot. Right before the cold spot. It was, turn around now. Oh, my shoulder's cold. Yeah. 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 And so, unfortunately, I didn't clip to get that last part clipped in. Um, and I highly apologize for that. We'll have to re-clip it later and just put it up as a little thing on our sites. Yeah, we'll put it up on our social media. Yeah. But I'm going to play the EVP one last time so you guys can hear it. So you can hear a male's voice say, yeah, I know. And then real quick, at the, right before the end, it says, turn around now. Gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was cool. real quick. Turn around now. Yeah, that was super neat. Mm -hmm. And so then, I mean, and that's how we kind of started out the weekend. It's just getting a little cemetery impromptu investigation. Yeah, but even that night when we were walking back to the car, we got that EVP when we're leaving. What's EVP? It sounds like a little kid telling us goodbye. Oh, oh that's, that's right. right. Let's play that now. Okay. I wonder what black thing was running around. I don't know. I wonder what black thing was running around. Oh no! You can hear that little kid in the very background. It sounds like he's saying, "All right, bye." That's what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's from a distance. It sounds and mind you, this was later at night. It was dark. Like nobody's around. Nobody else is around. It was we're, almost eleven o'clock at night. Yeah, we yeah. were we were leaving. We we're going back to the hotel, and and that's what we got. And this, this is kid. like a a very small town. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of people out. <laughs> like no, it's not like a normal city or like your big city where there's cars going everywhere and there's people no. around. There's nothing. It's dark. Everybody's at home. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. the town's only seven thousand or eight thousand people. It's, it's a, a small eight thousand. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's, I mean, that was really kind of the wrap up of our first night. Yeah. Which it was a good ending. It was a great ending. Yeah, it was a great <laughs> ending. You know, and if, <clears throat> honestly, if that would have been the end of the weekend, like that's all we got a chance to do, it would have been an amazing time. Absolutely. But that was just the start. Yes. Which is great. So the next day, now we get a full, and I use air quotes for this, full day. Yeah. Because <laughs> like. Most paranormal investigators, we don't go to bed right away, and then we sleep in late, <laughs> and then we get started about noon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we went in, we actually did a tour of the prison. So they have the Wyoming Frontier Prison has daytime tours. They start at, I think, 1130 or maybe 930, and they go every half hour. And it's a great price. It's like $12 per person to go. Highly recommend getting a chance to see this because... 
if you don't book a prison or a tour, the only thing you're going to see of the prison is the lobby, essentially. Yeah. yeah, and they give you so much good detail, and it's like an hour. Ours was a little bit long, longer than an hour. Yep. Um, but there was still so much more information that we could have learned after that hour. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the tour guides are super knowledgeable. They kind of bring you in as a newbie, and as they call them, fish. Mm-hmm. And so they kind of bring you through this whole this whole section in there, and you know we had actually we ended up meeting some two great ladies mm-hmm. who ended up being on our tour. Yeah. And you know they the cool part about it is they have their own podcast or they're going to be starting their own podcast. It's going to come out October first. Oct- yeah, October first, mm-hmm. and it's called Fifty States of Madness. Yep, check them out. They do have um, their Instagram, Fifty States of Madness that you can look at and they're kind of pinging their podcast on there and and stuff in the places that they visit. But what they like to do is they like to go visit places that have been abandoned and, Mm -hmm. and left behind and, and they find out the stories behind it. So that's going to be a really fun podcast. The history. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, huge shout out to Shannon and Gina. Yep. It was so fun meeting you guys. We had a blast. It was so much fun. <laughs> Lots of laughs. <laughs> it was great. So what we ended up doing is because hanging out with them, we um, were like, hey, let's have them tag along with us. So they mm-hmm. tagged along with us when we did our investigation, and it was really fun. I think it was Shannon's first time and Gina's second yeah. time investigating. So they were the fish in the group. Yeah. They were. <laughs> they really were, yeah. <laughs> fish meaning newbies, but yeah, yeah. it was really fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And so, like, on this tour, the cool part is we got to learn all of the history of this building. The neat thing is, like, this building was built in 1888. Actually, I wasn't saying it was built. The cornerstone was laid in 1888. That's just, they put a stone on the ground and said, we're breaking ground. We're going to start right there. (laughs) Got to start somewhere. Got to start somewhere. It took 13 years from the date that they laid the cornerstone to this place to be actually completed. Oh, wow. Well, it's big. It's surprisingly big. Mm-hmm. It is huge. It, it's deceptively huge. Yeah. The part I like about it, though, and I think this goes for a lot of old prisons, it looks like a castle. <laughs> yeah. It, it kind of does. does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's got that castle vibe. And that front of it. Yeah, and I love it. Yeah. The part that's kind of crazy is like, so it opened in 1901, and they had 104 cells. And this was cell block A. These were five foot by seven foot cells holding two inmates tiny 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 now if you think about it the bed takes up so much space and then you have two beds one stacked up on top of the other and the only room you have is this tiny like two feet of standing room yeah to walk around it is tiny now the part that's crazy is there was no electricity no heat no toilet no running water in these in these cells when they're first built so imagine now you're in a five foot by seven foot cell with a guy with another inmate, and all you got is a honey bucket. Ugh, that would be terrible. That would smell so bad. So bad. And there's how many of them? Like <laughs> you know, a hundred and four of them. A hundred and four honey buckets just sitting out. Oh, open gross. air. Yeah, and, that's ugh. gross. And someone's got to clean them. No, I wouldn't want that job. Right. That is just awful. That's disgusting. Yeah. So as you can imagine, right, uh, they filled up pretty quick. And so in 1904, they're like, hey, we need some more cells. So they added 32 more cells to A block. Now, you know, these cells are actually bigger. And one of them is a double cell, if you guys remember. Mm -hmm. And that's the barber chair. Yep. And so they actually let a guy be the barber. And when I say a guy, I mean a prisoner. Be the barber for all the rest of the prisoners. And I'm sure you can imagine that he was the most loved and well-respected and treated nicely against everybody <laughs> <Yeah>. else. Because <laughs> if, <laughs> yeah. yep. if you, you didn't. Yeah. Because if you did You weren't just going to get a haircut. No. And the thing is, is the warden was, ve- the, the warden was very strict, and he didn't want any of the men to have beards. So all of them were, were required to be clean-shaven, except for one. And he was an honorary old cuss, essentially. And he's like, you're never going to cut my, you know, you're never going to cut my beard. You know, I'll kill you first type of deal. And he's so, like, if you touch, you touch my beard, 
know you're going to die. Like, yeah. And they were terrified of him. And so he's the only one they didn't let, that didn't require to be shaved. And, he, and they got a picture of him in the uh, administration room. When he left. Yeah, when he left. And he's got this huge beard. And it's ZZ Top style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In 1950, they added B-Block. And so they added more cells in a whole new wing of cells. Now, the cool thing about B-Block is they actually got water. And not just water, hot water. Lucky. Lucky. Because <laughs> at this time, A-Block, now they got showers, they got running water now, but they got no hot water. Ice cold. And can you imagine that in the wintertime? No. I mean, Wyoming <laughs> with yeah. showers that are freezing cold. I mean, I can imagine that they would go weeks slash months <laughs> and, before taking those showers. And they did. And now it's the part. It's like they're like they were required to take a shower once a week, except in the wintertime. And then it would kind of get stretched out to like once a month. Or I remember her saying if they were just so stinky that they were demanded that they had to take a shower, they would force them. Yeah. Yeah. A little gross. Yeah. And there's this there's this section, and I don't know why they built it this way. And it's called the dark side of A. They painted the cells black. And on top of that, it's like in the shadows. It's really dark. It's surprisingly dark. And so what's what's crazy about it is, and they showed this too, they put a person in the cell and then they just walked backwards. And they and, just appeared or disappeared. You couldn't see them. Uh-uh. You couldn't. But they could see you. Yeah. Standing out there. Yeah. And so... After the guards got assaulted enough times by walking too close to the cells, they started to walk further away. Oh, but there was another issue with that. <laughs> That's right. Remember, Monkeys. Remember, they don't have toilets. They have honey buckets. <laughs> they would chuck poo out, <laughs> out of their cells. Yeah. It's so, <laughs> like like a bunch monkeys. of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's a stinky job. So if you go too close one way, you're going to get... Punched and grabbed. Punched and grabbed by it, by somebody in their cell. But if you go too far out the other way, you're going to get poo chucked at you. Yep. Oh, that's disgusting. You got to find a There's happy a fine medium. line <laughs> yeah. that you have to walk. Yeah, such a fine line. And so after they built A, right? Or I'm sorry, not A. After they built B... They kind of used B as a, a reward system because now the cells in B are actually twice the size or almost twice the size of cell block A. Right. And so they try to use that as a incentive incentive to not be poo chuckers. <laughs> <laughs> poo flingers. I don't think that worked actually, but I'm sure it helped a little bit. The neat thing is though, is that there was a group of cells in the front right when you walk into the B block that were solitary confinement. And they're, I mean, after a while they were changed from being solitary confinement. They were like storage and stuff like that. And I think one was converted into a shower. Mm -hmm. Just because it, it didn't work out the way that they thought it would because that side was warmer, bigger, and you had, you know, you had more space and so people would purposely get in trouble to get put into solitary confinement so they could be in the bigger, warmer space all by themselves. Yep. Yeah. Like, I don't, <laughs> I mean, if I were them, I would be like, that's freaking genius. I'm going to go in there. Right. Be alone in this quiet cell and by be myself warm. and be warm. <laughs> yeah. And their food wasn't great, right? Their food was only bread and water twice a day. But. Wow. Yeah. In the solitary. Yeah. But at least they were alone. And warm. And warm and in a bigger cell. Mm -hmm. So it's like, would you give up, a, you know, three meals a day to be alone and warm? I think most everybody would. Right. And yeah. stretch out. <laughs> exactly. So, and then uh, the women were who were on that property, right? They started in 1901. They started housing women. And then in 1909, they let them go. And they, they transported them to... I think Kansas and Missouri. I think I Colorado was, or Nevada. <laughs> I thought it was Nebraska. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it was out east. We're off. I it don't know. Somewhere it's somewhere else. Two different places they would distribute them. <laughs> yeah. But they only had 11 women there yeah. that, were, that were incarcerated in that prison. 
and they were f- completely separated. So uh, on the second floor of the main prison is where they housed the women. And the men didn't even really know that they were there. Yeah. They didn't ever see them. Yeah, and so yeah, nobody would have known. Probably a good thing. Yeah, I would say so. Definitely would say so. Um, and then 28 years later, after they built B Block, they built C Block. And C Block became the maximum, secu- maximum security cells. So these for you know these are for the baddies, but not the baddies that were going to die. They got housed somewhere else. These are just the baddies that weren't going to. So your violent offenders who didn't earn a short drop, literally in this case. <laughs> yeah, and we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> yes, we will. Um, but what was crazy about the one with C Block was um, their area that they get to hang out outside. Oh, their their exercise yard. Oh. Their <laughs> exercise yard yeah. was literally like what five feet by forty feet or something. I think long and skinny. I think it was long. six by forty. Yeah. Yeah, long and skinny and nothing on it. It was just this tiny little side yard, oh. and so they started complaining, and they were like, "Uh, can we get like a basketball hoop or something?" You know. Yeah. So the guy was like, "All right, I'll get you a basketball hoop." Now, mind you, there are lines they cannot cross. If they cross those lines, meaning if they go further out of that 40-foot area than they are supposed to, they can get shot or shot at. And so they're not allowed to cross those lines, but that's as far as they can go. So he decides to put the basketball hoop like 5 to 10 feet further from that line. Yep. And backwards. (laughs) So it's like... Don't complain anymore because this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it worse. Yeah. So now they have this basketball hoop that's right there, but they can't touch it. They can't play with it. It's backwards nonetheless. And they'd that, have to cross the line to be able to play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and some, then be shot. Yeah. And then sometimes <laughs> they would like they're was there like 30 of them or something? 36 cells. 36 cells. Yeah. And they get one hour of exercise a day, a day. alone. Yes, and it's when they tell you. Like, you don't have, like, a designated time. It's just when they tell you. So it's like, here, you want this one? I'll give it to you, but it's going to be at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. Yep. Here you go. Here's your time to go play. Yep, you have an hour by yourself at 3 o'clock in the morning. Take it or leave it. Could you imagine, like, Wyoming winter, right? 3 o'clock in the morning. Here's your (laughs) playtime. No. (laughs) Like, I think I'll skip it this time. Yeah. Because that's just not worth it. So there was there was a neat place out there. So we, when we came out um, of the cafeteria area, there was this big concrete slab that was there. And it started out, it was a, you know, it was a factory. And so they started out making brooms. And one of the things that would happen, you know, is that they'd make all these rooms that ship them across state lines, right? Then someone got this idea that you can no longer use prison labor to ship across interstate lines. So they closed down. And then they started making blankets for the Navy. Mm-hmm. And then after the war, the Navy didn't need the blankets anymore. So they shut the factory down. But here's the thing. It's like, here, let's make these nice, big, warm blankets for the Navy, but we're not giving you crap. Yeah. <laughs> like they're freezing in the winter in Wyoming, and they don't get these warm, comfy blankets. Yeah, they were, they were rated E for excellent Yeah, by the Navy. So there's these nice, big, thick wool blankets to keep you nice and warm, and you get nothing. I'd be so mad for making those blankets. <laughs> it would be awful. Like, at least just give me one. Right? Torture. Yep. So there's an interesting story, though, about that factory. And I can't remember the inmate's name. Maybe you guys can remember this. So he he was on really good terms with the guards and everything. He has very excellent you know, rapport. And a lot of times he would work late in the factory you know, sh- making shipments. And so he didn't show up for you know, evening meal, evening chow. They're like, yeah, he's just, you know, he's in the factory. He's working. He's doing some shipments, right? They're like, okay, that's cool. You know, I mean, it's his, his loss. He's not going to eat. Well, they go back and check his bunk in the next day, right? 
he's not there. He was boxing something up. <laughs> he boxed himself <laughs> and shipped himself out of the prison. Genius. Absolutely genius. <laughs> and I think that was the I think that was the train robber actually. Yeah, I can't Oh remember. yeah, I think you're right because then he went to go rob he robbed another train. And then robbed another train. And then robbed the second train and got caught. Yeah. And he was he was nicknamed the gentleman bandit. Because he would only rob males. Yeah, he would not rob women and children. He'd only rob the men. So, I mean, that's very nice, right? And then I do believe after he served his final sentence for train robbery that he finally left a life of crime and he opened up a hotel chain. Well, and he got married and... Yeah. Yeah. Changed well, wasn't... Him. Didn't he get married to the nurse? Yeah. Like, wasn't he... Like, she helped take care of him. He got injured somehow. I can't remember. And she took care of him. And That's they, right. they fell in love. And, yeah, they went off together and got married and then ho- opened up a hotel. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. You know, and then... On the outside of that, so that that's the in, I call this the interior courtyard of the prison, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's another set of double doors, and they have the exercise yard, which is really big, it's huge. It's and it used to have like a hockey rink in it. Or it something. had a hockey rink in the winter, baseball diamond, a baseball diamond. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you're like baseball diamond. Yeah. Well, the neat thing is, is they had a prison baseball team. Now let's just hold up. You give a prisoner a bat. <laughs> <laughs> And a ball. I mean, I just, I don't know how how far I trust that. Well, I mean, they did have the horseshoe pits, which now you give... (laughs) Metal horseshoes? You give them a metal horseshoe to to truck at people. (laughs) 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 It's not the brightest move. Really, it's not. There's a few flaws that they had with that prison with metal and things like that. Weapons. But what was neat is that they allowed the prisoners to have a baseball team, and then they actually played other teams. But they were only allowed to play there at the prison. They yeah. were not allowed to leave the prison. Yeah. So the team did fantastic until... <laughs> yeah. Until they executed their their catcher. Yep. And then their team just went downhill from there. Yeah. They were actually undefeated for several years until they executed the catcher. Yep. <laughs> and then they went on a nine-game losing streak. <laughs> Which is like, well, you just killed the team. Literally. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like the only time you can actually use that phrase in this case. Right. So, yeah, I mean, the prison stayed in operation for 80 years. It closed in 1981. And at that point in time, they opened up a new state prison. And they moved, I mean, everybody was moved out. The cool thing is, is the old, the last warden of the the Wyoming, because it used to be called the Wyoming State Prison before it closed. So that warden is the current warden today at the new prison. Wow. So he's still the prison. They've only had like 16 wardens in the history of Montana state. Montana. Or I'm sorry, Montana. Wyoming. Wyoming. <laughs> still thinking about the Montana prison. I Wrong am. prison. Wrong prison. <laughs> but yeah, six in, in the whole time they've only had like 16 wardens. Yeah. Which is kind of impressive. Let's get into our investigation. Let's. Let's. <laughs> so we start in the A block. And so like we had said, we'd had um, Gina and Shannon uh, come with us and join us on the investigation. And um, me, Gina, and Shannon went into one cell. And um, you guys went off. Into another cell. Into another cell. A few cells down from you guys. Yeah. And we were on the dark side of A. Yes. And why did we choose the dark side of A to start the night out? You guys can remember. It's because during our tour, when we were walking back through that side. No, that's right. It felt heavy heavy Mm -hmm. and oppressive. And it's like, you are not where you were supposed to be. And we're like, that's really cool. Yeah. Let's go there. Well, it felt like and it felt like we were being watched. Yeah. So we're like, yeah, let's start there. Yeah, I remember that now. But um, so we're separated. And 
I mean, it instantly started for me. Um, right after we started, I got an EVP of a whistle. Um, it's faint, so we're not going to play it for you. But um, And then Gina actually heard it and pointed it out. I hadn't even heard it yet. And um, so I caught that. And then a few minutes later, we heard really faint footsteps. Um, but it was distinct enough. Um, and so we're going to play that for you. Yeah, so that was the footsteps. And the, yeah, I mean, you just hear, dunk, dunk, dunk. It's about every second. Mm-hmm. So I was timing it, and it's about every second there's a footstep. So there's about four of them. Um, but then another thing we kept hearing was what sounded like water droplets. Yeah, and and that was it was loud. It was almost like a leaky shower head, right? Mm-hmm. And it was just this drip, This drip, constant drip. drip. But it, there wasn't like a rhyme or reason to it. So like the rhythm of it wasn't consistent. Just every once in a while you, you'll hear like drip, drip. And then, then you won't hear anything for a little bit. And then again, you'll hear a drip, drip. But there isn't any water. No running water. There's no it's running water. It's all shut off. And we were close. Yeah. I mean, we were close to the showers. We were. Yeah. Yeah. We were only about maybe 50 feet away from the showers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we kept hearing these like phantom water droplets. <laughs> and um, so, and then I got my rods out. And my dowsing rods. And I started saying, like, okay, is there anybody here with us? Cross them for yes or spread them apart for no. And um, we got yes. And I'd say, okay, point to where you are. And it pointed next to Gina. And then I, then I said, okay, tap it together. We're going to say the alphabet. And when we get to your letter, tap them together. And so I got to O. And it tapped them together. And... I was like, okay, what names come to your mind? Let's spit them out. And then when we get it right, then cross them for yes. First word she says, or first name she says is Oscar. And that's what's in my head. That's what's in Shannon's head. Gina spits it out. And um, it was like, yes, yes, like that's my name. And it crossed him for yes. And we were like, that's cool. So then, Josh, you do some research and you get a guy named Oscar Unbi- Unbihan? Yeah, that's pretty close. Something like that. I think it's German. Um, I looked it up on Family Search to see if that name was there. There wasn't his particular name, but the last name was, and they were from Germany. Um, but he was born in 1885 and incarcerated in 1930, but we don't know why he was incarcerated. Nope. Um, but there was an Oscar there. Um, which was kind of cool, but, um, then I decided to take a break for a minute and walked away from the girls because it kind of felt blank after a little while. Like it felt like nothing was really there. Um, felt we empty. At yeah. Certain point. Yeah. And we stopped getting communication and stuff. So I'm like, I'm going to walk away and see what I can find down the hall. So I just walked by myself and I go down into, um, like three or four cells down. Um, and then I, got a female whisper and that's that's really quiet so you know turn up turn it up a little bit and put some headphones on uh if you don't but you can hear this woman say be quiet yep i'll play it again here real quick It's super yeah. quiet, but really it's there. Really thin, but it's there. Um, but that was my extent in A Block. So what happened with you guys in A Block? So, yeah, we started out in this cell, and we put out the Flux 2 to start. Mm-hmm. And we didn't really get anything. No. And so I'm like, man, I kind of feel like they don't want me here. Right? So Jamie's like, hey, can you go get... I was like, I'm going to step out. And so I stepped out of the cell, and I was going to go grab the ovulus. And so I stepped out, and as soon as I walk out of the cell, the flux lights up, 
green for yes. Yeah. It's kind of like, yep. Like it was Be green gone. with him. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> yes, go. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's like, wow, that was rude. <laughs> um, and, we, and we brought the eye of this in, and it did kick out quite a few phrases. And none of it really. Most of it didn't make any sense yeah. at all. So they were just random. Yeah, they were just random. Mm-hmm. So, you know, because I had heard the, the water dripping when I was outside the cell, I was like, hey, why don't we go to the showers? You know, go check those out. Because, you know, I mean, if you think about it. You wanted to bunk. You wanted to bunk for one. And two, like, if there really is this noise of water dripping over there, right, maybe there's some spirits over there that would like to talk to somebody because, you know, they're hiding in the showers because it's a safe place or they're just a bully and like to beat up people in the showers. Right. So we went over there. So as we were walking out, we actually picked up a female voice. That was way too quiet. That was very quiet. But you can hear this woman say, I'm okay. Which, there's two things that don't make any sense. So, Elisa got an EVP of a woman saying, be quiet. Mm -hmm. And we get this EVP of saying, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And these are from women in a men's containment area. Yeah, and it's it's weird because throughout the night, that seems to be the theme. I mean, we do get some men contact, but most of the time, my EVPs were women. And we were chatting with women, and we're like, why? There was only 11 women here, but yet, then tons of men, but and we're in the men's area. We never went up to the women's area. No. Nope. We're in the men's area, and what we're getting is female EVPs. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, it was very strange. Mm-hmm. So we left A Block. Um, and at this point in time, too, it's still daylight out. We actually kind of started at 7 o'clock. And it doesn't even get dark till 9, which is interesting, you know, to be investigating in the daytime. It's not something we're normally used to. But, but we'll take what we get. <laughs> exactly. And it, and that's the thing. If you guys remember, like, it doesn't have to be dark no. to have a paranormal experience. And so, you know, you, you just do what you got to do in these places. So we went over to B Block. And, and, and this time, we just kind of tossed Elisa into solitary. Yep. I went to solitary confinement all by myself, and it was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, we did leave Shannon outside the door, I think. Yeah. She stayed outside the door. I shut the door had myself stay in there by myself and um i was there for the hour and i introduced myself because like like we said we like to introduce who we are first and it kind of gives spirits a i don't know more of a calming um that we're not like interrogating them or like monkey dance you know kind of thing um and so, because it's just like anybody else, just, if you were to walk up to somebody, you'd be like, hey, my name's Lisa. You know, you're introducing yourself. And so, anyways, um, I just introduced myself, and I got an EVP um, that says, hey. So, my name is Lisa. And if you want to talk to me, then talk to Really breathy. Yeah. But it also sounds female. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In solitary. Yeah. There weren't females in solitary. Nope. Nope. No female ever would have been in there. I'd say in a case, it's either sounds female or childlike. Yeah. But it's like, hey. And of course I didn't hear that. Um, but then right after that, my flashlight started flickering and it's just sitting on the floor and I just have this tiny little purple flashlight and it's just, and it had never done this before. It just started flickering like crazy. And it's not one of those ones that you can turn to turn it on or off. You have to push the button. Um, but it just started flickering and I told it to stop and it would stop. 
Um, but it didn't even do that for the rest of the night. It just did it while I was in solitary. The rest of the night, it was just fine. Like I didn't change the battery. I didn't do anything. It was, it was weird. Um, but I did get my, uh, thermal camera out. I have a FLIR and I attach it to my phone and there was this spot at the bottom of the door that nobody was leaning against it. Nobody was on it. And it was just like the darker red, which means heat. And I would say it was probably like a foot, a foot tall, um, like an oval shape. And then it just slowly disappeared. And I was like, weird, what is that? And then it, I was like, it's gone. And all of a sudden, boom, it's back. And I'm like, what in the world? That's so weird. So, and there was nothing to debunk because there wasn't anything on it. Nobody had touched it. Um, and like Shannon wasn't leaning against the door or anything like that. She was actually on the other side of where that was. Um, but yeah, it was weird. Um, oh, and then, um, I sat back and just closed my eyes and just kind of was like, all right, if you want to say anything, go ahead. Cause sometimes you get really good EVPs when you don't say anything at all. You don't ask any questions. You don't say anything. You just sit there in silence. And I felt this feather like finger ish. I don't know. <laughs> brush against my cheekbone. I just went up my cheekbone, um, really soft. And if you've been investigating before, you'll notice that uh, when you do get touched, a lot of times it does feel feathery. It feels really light and like a feather is brushing on you or against you or whatever. Sometimes it feels like cobwebs. Like yeah. If you've ever walked yep. through a cobweb and dragged it across your face. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, and then I... I was like, oh, that's weird. Felt something on my face. And then I closed my eyes again and just sat there um, for a couple minutes. And then, like, I was literally like, I'm going to fall asleep if I keep my eyes closed in this pitch black room. <laughs> I'm going to fall asleep. And then all of a sudden it feels like I just got rushed on. And if you've ever felt that, it's like you feel like you're getting the stare down. But it felt like it went right in my face. And I mean, anybody can feel that. You don't have to have any special gift or anything to no. feel like somebody's watching you. And it's intimidating. Yeah. So I got this like feeling like someone was rushing right into my face, staring me down. And and I'm just sitting on the floor back up against the wall. And I'm like, I open my eyes. I'm like, okay, uh, I can tell somebody's here. Do you want to tell me your name or anything? And then it was just gone. Like, as if someone was like, what are you doing in here? There's a female in solitary confinement all by herself. What the heck is going on? And then as soon as I acknowledge it, it's like, nope, I don't want to be a part of this. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. She found me out. <laughs> and I'm just gone. leaves. Because that stuff, it doesn't scare me. And so part of me is wondering, like, okay, was it trying to scare me? Was it, it trying to, like, freak me out? Because... I guarantee you for a lot of other people, it would have really freaked him out. Yeah. You know, but for me, it was just like, all right, tell me your name, <laughs> your prison number. Like, <laughs> what'd you like to do for fun? <laughs> so, yeah, that was my extent in my solitary confinement. Nothing super exciting, but you did get some stuff while I was in there, though. I did. So we put a camera in there just to, to kind of catch any evidence of anything that happens. And we did get this EVP. That came in. And it's male. And it's not very, I wouldn't say it's not very nice, but it doesn't say a very nice word. And mind you, like, we only have one male investigator, and that's Josh. And Josh isn't even around. No. no. I'm either at the other end of the cell block or on the other side. So it, it's definitely not me. What you hear is you're going to hear a guy, you're going to hear a guy say, shit, is what you're going to hear. And this is when I'm doing my flare camera. Yeah. And so that's what you're going to hear. So, yeah, I mean, that kind of wraps up. I mean, C block, right? I mean, there wasn't, 
at this point in time, we're three hours into our investigation. We got two hours left. Yeah, it goes by so quick. Mm -hmm. it, it does. And so we saved the best place, I would say the best place for last. And we haven't even touched on this place yet. It has a very ominous name. It's called the Death House. And it's called that for two reasons. One, the most people in the prison died in that, in that building. So the bottom floor is the infirmary. Mm -hmm. And the top floor is death row. Yep. The death house. Yeah. So they call it the death house. Two, over 220 inmates perished in that, in, in that prison. And so most of them would have died in that house. So the part that's kind of weird about it, right, is on the back side of the building, there's a pair of double doors. And it looks like, to me, on the, when you're just looking at the back of the building, it looks like, oh, that's just a storage closet. But that's not what it is. It's the drop door section of what's called the Julian Gallows. And if you haven't heard of that, I wouldn't feel bad because I had never heard of it before we went to the prison. Mm -mm. No. And so what it is, it's a, it's a form of trap door that doesn't require an individual to pull a lever and drop the door, right? So... Well, yeah, because they wanted to... They didn't want anyone to have to be in charge of somebody else's life or taking someone else's life, even if it was their job, mm -hmm. to have to... Live with that guilt. To say, pull the lever, you know? Yeah. And, and have them drop and yeah. break their neck. Like, they, they didn't want someone to have that hanging on them. So they created this device that Josh is talking about. Yeah, and so what it is is there's a... A wood, a wooden uh, board, essentially, right? Like a two by four. And it's got two hinges knocked into it. And it's got a rope attached to it. And the rope attaches to a weight. And, and the weight's on a balance or counter, counter lever, lever. And there's a bucket. And you put water in the bucket. And there's a hose at the bottom of the, of the bucket. So what happens is when the inmate's ready, he steps forward onto the trap door. His weight then pushes the lever, and he starts hearing water draining. When the water drains out enough, the board gets pulled because of the counterweight, and the trap door has weights on it, and the trap door's weights pull, and the guy gets hung. He falls out of the door, yeah. Theoretically, he gets hung. I mean, he, they will die, right? They're supposed to break their neck. Now supposed here's, to. Supposed to. Here's the thing. From the bottom of the, or the top of the ceiling to the, to the ground, it's like seven feet. It is not far enough to fall. No. No. So it only works. I mean, how many people were hung? Thirteen. Hanged, I guess. Thirteen. I think three of them, two of them worked. Two worked. Two actually broke their neck when they fell. And the rest strangled to death. Yep. But they just kept doing it. <laughs> like, I mean, I think after, to me, after the first few, I'm like, oh, this isn't actually really working. No. You would find out another solution. But nope, they just kept going. Yep. And then uh, they eventually did retire those gallows. And they brought in a gas chamber. Yep. And they used the hydrocyanide gas, which yeah. was much more effective. Uh, they all, but they only did execute five people using cyanide gas. And what they do is they would have them hold their breath when they sat down. And then once they put in the gas, then they would say, okay, take a deep breath. And then if you take that deep breath, then it's a lot quicker. Yep. You're not having to breathe that in so much. And, and usually what would happen, they would pass out within about a minute. Mm -hmm. And three minutes later, they would be deceased. Mm -hmm. So much more, I would say much more humane than the hanging. Yep. Um, because if you don't break someone's neck while hanging, it takes about 15 minutes for them to die. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, it's brutal, right? So we went into the lower part of the death house to start, which was the infirmary. 
Yes. And that's where we kind of started. And that was, that was fun. Um, now I had to run back to the fr- to I had to run back and get uh, something for it was a the cord. Camera. Yeah, I had to get a, a power cord for my camera so I could. I was switching cameras. I went from a normal IR camera to a full spectrum camera, and I forgot the power co- the cord that I could to plug in for power. So I ran back. So I get back, <laughs> and my <laughs> darling wife <laughs> is like, "Hey." Before you go, before you do this, hey, go check in there. There's blood on the wall. It, it looks like a surgical room. It looks like it's a surgical room. I was like, go just look through the window. I said, if if you look, I said, it looks like there's blood dripping down the wall back there. Which, to give her credit, there was. I mean, it's not real blood, but because they use it for Halloween. Yeah. But there's blood. But there was technically blood. <laughs> <laughs> Blood-ish. <laughs> blood adjacent. Yep. Yeah, so I go ahead and I put my... Big old fat head against the wall, <laughs> against the open window. And then I uh, decide to jump out and scare. <laughs> when I did it, I had been hiding for a little while, right? My knees were cracking. I'm sitting there <laughs> waiting for Josh to come. And I legit, that's the thing. It is so hard to scare people who hunt ghosts. Can I just tell you that? It is so hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when I jump up, I... I just thought I would get a better reaction, but I so did not. And I jumped up and tried to scare him. And you can tell it gets him for just a split second, but then he just yells at me back. <laughs> like a nanosecond. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it it's a start, right? Like you're there and then you get this little quick jump scare because yeah. something comes jumping up at you. <laughs> I had the, the flashlight. flashlight under my face and it's purple. So <laughs> it was great. Honestly, it was great. Like if this would have been a haunted house, like atmosphere, like. Uh-huh. You would have made a ton of people scream. It would have been perfect. <laughs> but it is hard to scare somebody who hunts ghosts. It really is. Because <laughs> we're used to seeing strange and like crazy things. We're almost expecting something like that. I mean, we're actually we're hoping for something like that. In reality, <laughs> we're really hoping for it. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I have been scared before on an investigation. I mean, that was you scream like a girl. I did. It was. <laughs> it was great. It was awesome. And so. You know, to Jamie's credit, she was trying to get me to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it on camera. <laughs> I know, because we had cameras going. It was we did. Awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, but yeah, we did start investigating there. And it was, like, it didn't take long in that, because we, we kind of investigated the surgical room, which I think our podcast table is bigger than the room. Well, there was just enough room for, like, a cupboard on the wall one bed mm-hmm. and somebody to stand on either side and, and it's barely and barely it's very very small and there were um on two of the walls was big windows yep and i mean i don't know if back then if they had glass in there or not um but then on the other side the, on another wall was that cupboard and then the other one is the doorway to come in and out so, um, not a lot of room, but we all went in there because Gina was saying that, like, she's not the type of person that really feels anything anywhere. Um, but she's like, I feel like we need to go there. And so we did. And as soon as we started, I mean, we get settled into that surgical room and I get touched on my hair, like, not just like on the outside, it was like in my hair. It was weird. It was like somebody put their fingers and went in my hair. Um, but to give it credit, I had also asked it um, because they had said in one of the cell blocks that C block, a C block that men like to touch women's hair. And so I was like, hey, go ahead, touch mine if you want. I had my hair down. I'm like, go ahead. Um, but it didn't happen there. But it happened as soon as we went to the infirmary. My hair, it was like somebody put fingers in my hair. And then um, Josh got out the rods and asked how many spirits were there. And it tapped together like 34 times. And we're like, okay, um, are you for real? Because it doesn't really feel like there's that many here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? He got up to 42. Yeah. It was a lot. It was, it was a, lot. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It was like over 40 spirits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, the, and 
and we're like, hey, look, if, if there's 40 spirits here, do something, right? Yeah, make a noise. Like, get, gather together and bang something. But right before that, Gina got her hair pulled. Like, somebody, I don't know if they pulled it, grabbed it, touched it, something, but it freaked her out. Like, she was trying to get out of the room. Yeah. And we stopped her. We're like, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. And, and calmed her down a little bit. And, like, it happens, but... And I get it too. Like yeah. if, if you've never been touched before by a ghost, yeah. Like the first time it happens, it can be unnerving. Well, especially if you're new to ghost hunting in general, you know, and not expecting something like that because we weren't. That's not what we were asking for. No. No, we really weren't asking to be touched. We don't generally ask. To no, be touched. we not don't generally. We don't make a habit of that for sure. Mm-mm. Um, but she got pretty startled. And then we heard a bump. And then we kept hearing a bump. And it sounded like it was on the other side of the infirmary. In, um, the, in the dentist office area. Is yeah. kind of where it sounded like yeah. it was coming from. And which is a little bit further down. And it would happen on command. And it happened so often that Josh ended up going out. And checking around to see if anything was hitting the building. And there wasn't, right? No, there wasn't. And it was happening, it was happening about every 30 seconds. Yeah, but it wasn't like on cue, right? It wasn't every 30 seconds. But it was like we would ask a question and it'd answer with a thump. And it would do it almost every single time. And so I was like, all right, if it's so good at making these thumps, then I'm going to do shaving a haircut. And... So everybody knows shaving a haircut, dun, 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 dun. And so I'm like, all right, you know, shaving a haircut. And Josh had the rods and it said yes. I'm like, all right, let's do, um, I want you to finish it for me. I'm going to do the first part. You do the last part. So I'm like, dun, 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 dun on the wall. And we instantly got done. We got our knock. But then that was it. We just got the one. Yep. So then we tried it again and we instantly got another knock. And then about five seconds later, we got the second knock. Yeah. So we did get two. They weren't quick one after the other, but it was two knocks still. Yeah. And at one point in time, I put the rods down, right? I was like, look, if you want to talk to us, you know, you got to make a noise. You got to do something, right? Yeah. And as soon as I said that, we got bang. We got Mm -hmm. the knock. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, if that's really you, do it again. Bang. Yeah. All right. I'll pick these back up. It was so cool. I have... I mean, I've heard knocks before, but I've never heard one to have this many knocks and two to have it answer every time we asked it to do it or asked a question. I have 13 listed. Yeah. Or, it or was, there's 14. There are 14 that I have listed, and that's 20, in 24 minutes of investigating that room. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. That is amazing to get that many because, I mean, you go into investigation and... Generally, you can hear one knock, mm. maybe two. Right. But to have that many in, like, within 45 minutes. Yeah. It's impressive. It's yeah. very impressive. Yeah. And really, like, other than the knocking and some dowsing rod work, it was pretty quiet. Yeah. Like, I didn't get any, I didn't get any EVPs. No, and I didn't either. But we did get a cold spot. So when we were gathered around the um, surgical room. It was like at the foot of the bed. Yeah, I was actually outside of the surgical room leaning into the window because it's fairly short enough that I can just stick my arms on it, you know, and I had my recorder going next to me. And um, I asked it to make the area cold around me. And I stuck my hand out. And that area got cold. And so we had everybody feel it. Everybody felt the difference between the cold and the warm just right above it or right around it. And that was pretty neat. And then it would move. You could feel it move. But it would just be in this one area, which was really cool. Yeah. And the the, the doors were close to this building. And it was, I don't know, it, it had to be 75, it 77. Was, it, it was a warm night. It was warm in there. And yeah. so a cold spot like that with no breeze... Yeah, there's none. No breeze at all. Yeah. And the area that was cold wasn't a breeze either. No, it was just cold. It was just cold. Yeah. Um, but then we head up to the gas chamber. 
Yes. Now that place was awesome. <laughs> Highlight of the night. It really was. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons why we saved it for last. You, know, you try to save the best for last. Um, and then also, in all the places that we've ever gotten a chance to investigate, this is the first gas chamber. That's yeah. true. Yep. We've investigated gallows before, but we've mm-hmm. never investigated a gas chamber. Yeah. And so I was like, this is kind of cool. Yeah, so we um, set everything up, and I got my SB7 spare box out, and I started. we started the SE's method. And um, if you don't know what that is, what it is is where you have noise-canceling headphones on, and it's plugged into the spirit box, which is a radio that can sweep forward, backwards. You can um, sweep it really fast, sweep it really slow. And I had mine going backwards and fairly fast. And out there, there is not a lot of radio. And so the idea is, is when you're sweeping through these stations, is that you'll get words that will pop out or sentences um, uh, from the people who are outside of you, like who are um, asking questions who don't have the headphones on. So the only job of the person who has the headphones on with the SP7 spare box is to listen to the words and just spit out whatever they hear. That doesn't sound like it's coming from the radio. And with this, there wasn't hardly any radio stations going because a lot of the times it'll shoot out a word and then it will be um, hopefully relevant to the question that is being asked um, by everybody else around you. And this one was probably the best session that we've had. Yeah. It was reminiscent of our Camp Floyd. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. But this one uh, was more accurate, which is really neat. Because, like, normally, it, I mean, it's it's kind of like running the ovulus, right? It, it You get lots of random words, lots of random things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they make sense. But this one was, like, I'd have to say it's probably close to the 90 percentile of accuracy, which is amazing for this type of session. Yeah, and you literally cannot hear what the questions are being asked because all you're hearing is ch 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 yeah. you know and then the words popping out but you've got noise canceling headphones on and you have those things blasted as high as you can go as loud as you can get it and so it's really loud in your ears so you're not you're not going to hear any questions that are being asked and when we started this um Okay, mind you, where we're sitting is we're sitting in front of the gas chamber and just around the corner, around the wall on the other side is the gallows. Yeah. And so we're in the area where these people died, right? And in like, I don't know, maybe if two minutes in or something, I mean, I got like clotheslined or something oh yeah by this entity like it felt like they took their hand opened up their hand and in between their thumb and their first finger just like pushed it against my throat really fast and choked me and I just started this coughing fit that went on forever but it like it felt really sore on my neck um feeling that on me um but then um, this negative guy comes through and tells us to stop. And it starts calling names, calling us names. It was not very nice. No, no, it wasn't. But then it sounded like, after a little bit, it sounded like these spirits were, like, fighting with each other. Mm-hmm. And, and then um, one of them said, in the spare box, one of them said, um, it's hot in here. And then, um, and Josh is like, it's getting hot. (laughs) Like, I don't know if you remember that, but you're like, it's getting hot in here. Yeah, Yeah. it it was, it was sultry in there. Like it, so I put up an EDI, which is a combination like uh, geophone and EMF and temperature gauge. Mm -hmm. And I put it right on the the chair inside the the gas chamber. And it started at 74 degrees. It ended above 77. Yeah. And, that doesn't happen. Like, 
especially when you're going into nighttime, it gets cooler, not hotter. Yeah. But for, and then generally when entities show themselves or when they're around or are making contact or anything like that, it's usually it, colder. It gets colder. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't want to say that's always 100% accurate, but. There, there have been documented cases of, t- of spirits raising the temperature yes. in rooms. Yes. So I'm not going to say it's 100% of the time because it's not. But most of the time, what you're going to expect is it getting colder. Right. Yeah. And this did not. It just got warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer. And we are getting to 11, 11.30 at night. And it should be cooler Yep. Because of the cooling temperatures from outside. But yep. it, it wasn't. Um, but then, and then Josh said, how many spirits are here? And instantly I said seven. And then I got another entity that said seven again. A different one. So the first one was a woman. The second one was a man. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think what's neat is like, because... Whoever we were talking to, the guy that we were talking to, did not like women. No, Mm-mm. he didn't. And he used the B word. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Jamie doesn't like bullies. Well, who does? Nobody, Nobody. that I know. And so Jamie decided to fight back. Stand up for herself. Yeah. Yeah. And it got, I don't say it got heated, but it was definitely a good exchange. And it was very, at one point in time, I had to put my head down and, <laughs> and laugh into my hands. Because, <laughs> you know, Jamie's in, in, in there defending everybody, right? Uh, because, you know, that's the, the, way, she's, the way she's geared when, when we're dealing with these bully types of spirits. And so I just have to, you know, not laugh loud enough so it gets, <laughs> on, so it gets picked up. <laughs> yeah, I definitely had fun. Yeah, it was yeah. it was such a fun uh, Estes method. Well, it and, was, and then we started getting these entities that it sounded like they were trying to escape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they started having a conversation between each other. Like the words that I was spitting out, the sentences that were coming out um, were very much to someone escaping. Like, there's going to be consequences. Mm-hmm. You know, hurry up or they're coming, yeah. you know, and um, it was just a really cool experience. And then um, we decided to go into uh, the gallows and spend our last few minutes in there. And we did the exact same thing. I sat in the middle of the where you drop with the bodies. Door. Yeah, the trap door. I sat on top of that, and we did an, another um, SC's method. And um, I had never heard this before, but we got a guy that was stuttering. He had a Hispanic accent, and I had never, I've never heard a stutter before. And it was, and he was like, I just woke up. And we were like, did you like just die and realize that you're here? Like, you know, we were trying to figure out what was going on and, um, he wasn't saying things that were full sentences. A lot of the time, a lot of the time it was like, I just, it just, you know, he couldn't get it out and like, he couldn't get it out. And so then there were other entities coming through saying idiot. And which is definitely not a nice word to call somebody. No. no. But if you look like historical context, idiot or calling somebody dumb was used for people who had speech problems. Yep. I mean, it doesn't make it right. Right. But, I mean, that's how they, they treated the people that had stuttering issues. They call them, they call them idiots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then people started, like, other entities that sounded like they were just calling him names and, like, just being bullies to him and uh we asked him what his name was and he said steve yep and of course it was steve steve (laughs) (laughs) but what was neat though is right before he said his name jamie's you know gave him instructions yeah i i told him to um like take a deep breath and just concentrate 
and you know on getting a word out and I asked what his name was and that's when we got Steve and that was like the first clear word mm-hmm. that he had said and um and then he started coming out with uh longer sentences I guess um and the thing is is how you can tell it's him is it's that same voice that's coming through every time and you can tell once once you're doing this for a while, you can tell the differences between the voices and you recognize like, oh, this is voice A, voice B, voice C. You know, you can kind of differentiate. And um, and he said, I just woke up. I don't know what to do. What's in this? And just kind of sounding like he was confused, like, what am I doing here kind of sense. Yeah. So, um We try to help him along a little bit, and um, then another spirit called him special, and and then after a while, it just kind of stopped. We stopped getting anything coming through, and Jamie was like, "All right, is there anything else you want to say before we pack up and get out of or pack up and leave?" And then um, instantly, right after that, on the spirit box, somebody says, "Get out of here." <laughs> yeah, she spits out. <laughs> Elisa's like, you know, she's got the headphones on. She's like, get out of here. And I was like, yep, we're going. <laughs> we're done. We're leaving. We're leaving. Yeah, and that and that was kind of the night. It was it was actually a lot of fun. It was. I could have done longer. There, I could have done sure. a couple more hours for sure. Oh, absolutely. I really wanted to spend more time doing other things than mm-hmm. just the spirit box yeah. um, in the gas chamber, in the death house, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But All the more reason to go back, right? Oh, and if I were to go back, I would spend or plan a night in the cemetery. Absolutely. That yeah. would be amazing. Yeah, because that was, that was a lot of fun. But and- bring bug spray. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> there were some that were, it sounded like EVPs, but it's just a little bug going. Zzzz. Yeah. <laughs> I think the part that's really, I wanted to go find and I couldn't. Um, mainly because like, they have this map, this gazebo in the cemetery. And it shows a map of the entire cemetery. Yeah. And it shows you all of the graves that are listed there. Yeah. And then there's these two giant sections that say, Unmarked graves. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I really want to go check that area out. Yeah, and check that out. Yeah. I couldn't figure out the the road system that they have (laughs) inside of the the cemetery. I'm like, where are they? Yeah. And we ended up, you know, just kind of getting, we went to the the military section and then, you know, which was awesome in itself. So it was a great night. So going back would definitely be on that list of things to do and maybe spending a couple nights in this, in, in the prison. Cause it's fun. It's yeah. a fun place to go. Yep. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So we're going to try something new, at least for this episode. And this section, I'm going to call it ask an investigator. And so I pulled some of our followers on Twitter to see if they had any questions to, ask, to they'd want to ask an investigator to get answered for them. Okay. And so we have our friends at We Have Issues podcast, which these guys are hilarious. Their their podcast essentially is uh, two friends writing a comic together and talking weekly about how they've failed to meet their <laughs> goals. <laughs> and so they're a lot of fun. Go ahead and check them out. So the first question they ask is, what is the most convincing piece of evidence you've discovered, seen, uh, or seen for the existence of paranormal phenomena? Mm. Oh, geesh. I don't know. I've had some pretty good ones. It's hard to just pinpoint one. After years of doing it, I'm sure (laughs) it can be a challenge. What do you think, Jamie? As far as seen? Yeah, discovered or seen. I, you know, for me, the best, the best, as far as visual goes, for me, would be what we caught at Asylum 49. Oh, the hand. The hand. Yeah. So that's on the YouTube channel. Yeah, that is. And you can check that out. It's this long, 
fingered hand. It's with got three fingers. Three fingers. And, and it's, it looks like it's making the I love you sign. Yeah. Except mm-hmm. it's only got three fingers. Yeah. But that's all the fingers it's got. And it's got these long pointy nails. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever seen Jamie's fingernails, they're, they're not short. long and they're not pointed. Oh, no. And I got, I got short, stubby fingers. Yeah. yeah, these were long, skinny. Skinny, thing. yeah. You see the knuckles. You see, yeah. It's it's pretty grotesque, really. Yeah, and it, and so what we're doing is we're doing this EVP session in the uh, what's called the Egyptian room, and we're like, I was like, hey, look, there's this digital recorder there. It's this little red light. You can talk into it, and as soon as I say that, you see this hand with this giant finger come down and point directly at the digital recorder. Yeah, but first you see the. On the on the left side of the screen, you see the K two meter spike. Spike. It goes mm-hmm. all it the way red. It pegs red, red. Mm-hmm. and then you see the finger come in a frame, like a nanosecond later, comes in a frame, points at that digital recorder. Yeah, but that doesn't just happen once. That K two meter spikes again and pegs it red again, and then you see a hand come up on what would be my right side, like my rib cage, and it kind of comes up and it does this little motion like it's rubbing and then it (laughs) gropes me in the chest area so yeah and you don't see me stand there because i'm dressed completely in black i have dowsing rods in my hands you don't see me there um but that's exactly where i was standing yeah so yeah and that was really neat and so for me yeah and the cool the coolest part of all of that right is that's the first time we ever brought a camera to yeah. an investigation. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's like just a tiny little, it wasn't even a GoPro, it was like a knockoff. It's like a, a knockoff, it's a knock-off yeah. knockoff GoPro. <laughs> <It's a total laughs> but, but it worked. It worked great, and I mean, that still blows me away to this day. I can't believe that that's... Yeah, that's pretty yeah. awesome evidence. Yeah. I would say mine is, um, I was with, I was on another team at the time, and we went and did a home investigation. Um, and in this home... This person had been dealing with things for a very long time and pretty intense things. And you would walk down into their basement and it was like walking through thick fog is what it felt like. And it was heavier than heavy in there. And um, we were discussing what it was doing and what it had been doing. Like it had been heating up the fish tank and killing the fish and just messing a lot with electronics and things like that. And then one of um, the other paranormal investigators was like, oh, it's an elemental. He just snaps his fingers. He's like, elemental and calls it out. And I got an EVP on my recorder instantly afterward. And he goes, you suck. <laughs> and I, like, it was class A EVP. Perfect. <laughs> totally called him out. And it was not quiet. I mean, it was loud. So I knew, like, after that, I was like, yeah, that's so freaking sweet. <laughs> that's that yeah, awesome. awesome. <laughs> you know, and then we, we um, cleansed the house and everything. And the house instantly was a totally different feel. I mean, you would never have guessed that that basement was thick and heavy and just ominous. It just, ugh, it felt really bad in that basement. And it was wow. like that whole basement. And then it just felt like as a feather. Like it was really cool. That's but amazing. Yeah. That EVP was probably <laughs> one of my favorites. That's awesome. <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> okay. So the next question is, Is there a special attribute that makes someone capable of paranormal investigating? Uh, Being patient. Oh, that's a good one. Because I think, you know, as an investigator, you sometimes are sitting there for a very long time. It's not saying anything, not doing anything, not moving. And you got to be still and quiet and... Sometimes you don't get anything and sometimes you do. And so just being patient and uh, waiting, I think, is probably a good one for me. I'd have to very much agree with that. It takes a lot of patience. It's here's the thing that the people uh, the people don't really see. Right. Because most of us, uh, we we know 
paranormal investigating through TV shows. And we get to see a half an hour Mm -hmm. of them investigating. And there's stuff going on like every five minutes. Oh, yeah. It just seems like it's really active, like amped up. Yeah, exactly. That's not what it's like at all. What you don't see is that's three days of shooting Mm -hmm. to get 30 minutes of content. Yeah. And so for us, like what you guys heard tonight is us investigating for five Five hours. hours. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we're sitting there in the dark, in silence, and asking questions here and there. Like, really, it's it's not jaw-dropping is what people think. And sometimes, really like not. I'm saying, like I was in, I was in solitary confinement and ready to fall asleep. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't lying. <laughs> yep. It was, it felt quiet and calm mm-hmm. the entire night. It was pretty still most of the night. Yeah. And honestly, like I was not going to be surprised if we came back empty handed. Oh yeah. Yeah. Except we didn't, which is great. Right. But I, I fully expected not to get a single EVP. Yeah. I really did. I mean, it, except for when we went to the cemetery, because we kind of found that right off. We decided to listen to it right when we got back. Yeah. But while we were there, yeah, I really was like, I'm not really getting anything, guys. So, uh, you know, like, because I'm listening to my recordings as it's happening. But it's funny that I'm not hearing this as it's going on. It's weird. The ones that I'm catching... I mean, I, I would get something like the footsteps and stuff like that. I would catch those and I could hear hear them. But, yeah, for the most part, I didn't hear these. I don't know how, but I just I didn't hear them while I was listening to them. Yeah. Yeah. I would say one of the things, probably one of the things that's really special for people is an open mind. Yeah. And the reason being is that not everything's paranormal. No. Mm-mm. Please debunk. Yeah. And try to figure out if there's a logical explanation for what you're seeing and hearing or experiencing. Try to recreate it if you can. Yeah. Because sometimes like a shadow, I mean, there are times that shadows get cast, especially in IR, where you've got multiple IR lights. Mm -hmm. And they will cast shadows that aren't seen with your eyes, but they'll be seen on the cameras. Or you'll you'll get someone walking by and there'll be a a, a flashlight light. Or something that will cost, cast a shadow and you're like, oh, that's somebody. Or a car light or anything like that. Yeah, a lot of reflection if there's mirrors or if there's windows or, you know, things like that. Try to see what it looks like when a car drives by. Or, you know, if somebody happens to walk by at a different angle. You know, I think debunking is huge because it's... I don't know about you guys, but for me, if I'm watching, like paranormal investigating shows or or even with other groups and it's like oh that was a ghost oh that was this did you hear that i heard this and it gets to a point where you're like no yeah (laughs) Yeah. this is really annoying to watch because that was i could tell you right now what that was right and it wasn't anything paranormal so and it obviously also makes you more validating if yeah. you can debunk the things that are happening, um, then the things that you cannot debunk are the things that are really validating. Yeah, and we use, I mean, we use this this adage, you know, if in doubt, throw it out, and it works. So, you know, we have someone go through and listen and review evidence, and then we have, you know, we play it back what we find or we think we find. And we play it back for everybody else to, to listen to. Mm-hmm. And if there's doubt, then we just toss it out. Now, it could be something. Yeah. But because we're not sure, we just let it go. We, we dismiss it. We, in fact, we did that last night. We sat here and did that last we night. We did. Mm-hmm. We did. And it's like, okay, cool. Like, if there's enough doubt, then we just, we're just not going to try to show it as evidence. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and that's just kind of how you have to do it. Because sometimes... You have Subway before you go investigate. <laughs> yeah, this is good. And your stomach growls the entire night. And on your digital recorder, it sounds like... It sounds like a full-on growl. Yeah. Yeah, it was hilarious. It was just good. And in reality... <laughs> All night. It's just your stomach. 
and it goes on for five hours. And then when you get back to your hotel room, <laughs> it, it just stops. stops. <laughs> Maybe it was like date gas. You know? <laughs> You're so excited to be there, and you just started getting some date gas. And <laughs> it's a card called paranormal gas. <laughs> okay. So the last question is, is what do you think everybody should know about paranormal investigating? Hmm. Where do you start? Not everything's paranormal. I think we covered that part. Yeah, that's a big one. We did. I think the one other thing is that it's not as scary as you might think it is. Not nearly. I hear so many people talk to me about it. And they're like, oh, I could never do that. That's so scary. I'm like, well, that's kind of why I started going into this is because I had experiences all growing up and I was terrified. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even sleep with the light off. Like I was terrified, even being an adult. And so I'm like, I am done being scared of this. I know knowledge is power. So I'm going to go on some investigations and figure this out. And, And so I did. And I ended up getting on a team, a really great team. And had a wonderful time, learned so much, and realized I am so much bigger, better, and stronger yeah. than they are. And it is not <laughs> as scary as I thought it was. It is, And the longer I do this, the more I'm like, like I was in solitary confinement. I'm all by myself in the dark, falling asleep. And where other people would be totally freaked out, eyes mm-hmm. wide open, waiting for something to happen. Yeah. yeah. Right? You have a voice, too. Yep. And your body is your best tool. Yep. That's, I think, another one. 100%. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, going back to the scary part, we've been doing this, what, four, four years now, right? Somewhere in there, Somewhere yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Before we started doing this, I was terrified of the dark. Mm-hmm. I didn't go into dark rooms, let alone try doing this. And now it's like, you know, it's not, it's not scary. You know, it's... Sometimes, like, you might get startled. Sure. You know? Like someone might jump at you from behind the window. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Someone might jump at you from behind a window. <laughs> but it, it, in what I've experienced anyway, the, the living are far scarier. Oh, yeah. Than the dead. 100%. Mm-hmm. I am not scared of the dead. I am scared of the living. Yeah. 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 So what about you? What about you, Jamie? What do you think? Well, I mean, I... I like pretty much same answers, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been a, f- a fun journey so far mm-hmm. that we've had. I've enjoyed it, and you learn a lot, especially this year. It's it's been fun. Yeah, it's been fun. We're we're picking up momentum. We're we're we got some great things coming down the road, and it's exciting. And guys, if you love listening to us talk about investigations. We have five more before the end of the year. Yes. In fact, we have five more before November. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we, we have a couple events coming up. We do. We do have some events coming up, which you guys will hear about on, the, on our next episode. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, we do have some fun stuff coming up for you guys to experience and to, to enjoy having some fun with us. So stay tuned for that. Absolutely. Don't want to miss it. You do not. And so where can they find us? Uh, you can find us on Facebook at Paranormal Peeps Podcast. You can also find us on Facebook at uh, Cold Spot Paranormal Research. And you can find us on Instagram at Cold Spot underscore Paranormal underscore Research. And at Twitter at CPR Paranormal. And as always, stay ghosty, my peeps. <laughs> <laughs>